before three things would finally come together. Affordable telescopes made available to the public, home-based editing software, and a popular public medium such as YouTube. Considering how I stepped outside and took this image of the moon with a mere Canon Rebel camera with a 300 zoom lens, you'd think that someone, somewhere possessing a more powerful telescope, would eventually capture strong evidence of alien activity. They have. Bill Bryson hasn't been active in a few years, but when he was, he was often, well, corny in his delivery and may have jumped to some conclusions, but he also captured this. I count at least 10 UFOs passing here, once more in slow motion. From the United States East Coast, William Duran used a 12 and a half inch telescope to capture something incredible. And that object exited that crater shifted directions at about a 45 degree angle and then followed the curvature of the moon away from us. In slow motion, notice the shadow briefly visible on the crater wall. Crow 777 is the guy who first showed us the mysterious moon wave phenomenon. And as you'll see, he's also captured some other very compelling stuff. This guy is thorough, making certain his findings aren't mundane by checking things such as known satellite patterns and he even has other astronomers more than 500 miles away comparing what they're seeing simultaneously. Take a listen to Crow 777. And this object was shot in 2013, and it's really quick, but I'll tell you what, it's nowhere near the speed of a satellite. Um, we've filmed many satellites, and I include one in the very end of this clip just so folks can see what satellites look like. This is slowed down to 30%. Okay, this is a smaller object coming in at the right here. This was shot in 2014. And again, you can see the halo. It's really heavy on the upper side of this. It's not even at all. And I put a filter on to kind of demonstrate the halo effect, but I blended it with the original clip so that it's not too heavy. But you can distinctly see the halo and that it's thicker on one side than the other. This aircraft was using extremely high voltages, and the voltages would ionize the air around the vehicle so much that it would start producing X-ray photons. Something that was described by Michel Cuvieri in his 1994 paper on warp drive, the creation of a warp drive that would not violate general relativity. One of the things that he was suggesting was that you would be able to engineer a vector or a pair of vectors in space-time that would, on the one hand, cause a compression of space-time ahead of the vehicle and an expansion of space-time behind the vehicle. Environmental conditions that you experience inside the spacecraft are pretty much pegged to the, the time and place that you start out from. So you don't have any sense of g-forces or, or being moved around. You don't have any um, sense of acceleration because the entire pocket of space-time that you're encapsulated in is being accelerated by the vectors that are created around the system. Here, Crow 777 has captured what appears to be a spacecraft firing a glowing propulsion unit. He describes how the craft responds accordingly 
when this set of three thrusters fire. Whatever this is, it's an incredible catch. And he's got a lot more to offer, so make sure to visit Crow 777. Now, before we look at the next astronomer and his work, check out this restored image from the Apollo archives. Brett Shepard is an amazing talent and friend who has a great story we'll cover further in another presentation. But in this image, he's truly helping us to see what is being hidden in plain sight. It's important that you see this. It will help you to rationalize what you're going to see next. Bruce Swartz, a.k.a. Bruce Sees All, is dedicated to busting this thing wide open for the rightful sake of humanity. Bruce is finding ways to cut through the filters many of us believe are keeping us from seeing the true surface of the moon. He's using 3D imagery techniques to essentially map out what he claims are artificial surface structures. Entire cities, people, and while others are wasting time strictly adhering to what they've been taught. Bruce is busy creating roadmaps of the moon. John Lear tells us that as many as 250 million people are living on the moon and that there is a breathable atmosphere present. Maybe he's right. And you heard right, he said people. But keep in mind, if they're not born on Earth, they are still considered extraterrestrials. They're not one of us. Beware.